Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to update your BIOS using Linux. So let's get started. Okay, so there's a couple of things that we're going to need before we get started, and they are a blank USB thumb drive, and you're going to need to know the make and model of the laptop or desktop that we're going to upgrade the BIOS on. If it's a desktop that you built yourself, you're just going to need the motherboard make and model. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be working on a Dell Latitude E4310. So I think the most logical place to start would be to actually set up the USB key. So I'm going to go and plug mine in now. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use UNET Bootin to install FreeDOS onto our USB key. So I'm just going to open up the software center. And what you're looking for is UNET Bootin and it's this here. It should be available on all distributions. Alternatively, you can find it in your repo, so let's just show you that, apt cache um, unit boot in. Ah, sorry, apt cache search is what I wanted to do. There we go. And as you can see, it's in there. So you can just type in sudo app dash get install unit unit boot in and that will install it I'll just run it I've already got it installed so it's not going to install it twice there you go it's already the newest version that I have so depending on the distro if you're on Ubuntu you can do it either of these two ways either on the command line or using the Ubuntu software center that will work once you have it installed, you need to open it up. So unit boot in, not unity, ah, can't type today. So unit boot in, and let's just enter in our admin password. And the first step that we're gonna have to take is to select the distribution. So we're looking for FreeDOS which is here, uh, version 1.0 is fine. And we need to select our USB disk, so USB drive. And mine is coming up as slash dev slash SDD1. Um, I'm just gonna confirm that. So if you open up a terminal, I've already plugged mine in. So actually, let me just have a look here. So as you can see, it's this here, which is this Toshiba drive here. So let's just get rid of that. And if I type in sudo um, blkid and enter in my password, let's look for that name. So Toshiba is here. Here's the label. And yes, it is on slash dev slash sdd1. Now, I would recommend that you actually make sure of that because you don't want to install FreeDOS over your operating system. So that's done. I'm sure that that is the correct drive. So I'm just going to exit that and I'm going to click OK to install FreeDOS to it. So this will take a couple of minutes or seconds. Um, that's done. So let's just exit that now. So we don't need unit booting anymore. We've done exactly what we needed to do. So I'll just open that up and you'll see what it's done. So it's installed FreeDOS onto this USB key. Okay, so that's done. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to actually download the BIOS executable files. Now, in my case, I'm working on a Dell Latitude laptop, so I need to go to Dell's website. So I'm just gonna open up Chrome and I'm just gonna search for Dell. And this looks like the correct site. Now, once on the website for your manufacturer, you're going to probably find what you're looking for in support. They'll probably have it listed under support. That's um, generally what most manufacturers do. So click on support and for home will be fine. Should find it in there. You might have to do some digging about on some of these websites. So each one is different. And I'm just going to go to browse for a product and view products. And it's a laptop. So laptops 
it is a latitude and it is a e e4310 so it's over here and what we're looking for is probably going to be in drivers and downloads so i'm just going to click on that okay so i'm just going to have a scroll down and have a look for bios there we go so there's that's what we're looking for okay so i'm going to click on other versions because the only version that's listed here is a14 and I happen to know that this laptop is on A09 and I'd have to actually install A10, A11, 12, 13 to get up to 14. So I'm just going to click on other downloads and I'm going to have to start downloading from A09 all the way up to the most current. So I'm going to start by clicking on that to download it and just scroll down and hunt for a download link which is here. Now something else you need to pay attention to is you should find that there are some hashes for these files. So as you can see here, SHA-256 is not available, so I can pick either MD5 or SHA-1. Now I'm just going to pick SHA-1 and I'm going to copy this and paste it into a text document. So I'm going to open up gedit for that. gedit, there we go, open up a gedit window. And I'm going to paste the hash into this document. So control V. And then I'm just going to put two spaces after that and copy the file name, which is here. And just paste that onto the same line. So this hash corresponds with this file name. And then just go to a new line. So now I'm just going to download that file and download it directly to my flash drive. So click save. And then I'm just going to go back to download the other files. Actually, just one thing about this um, file. I think you do need an empty line at the end. So I'll just save that now. It shouldn't affect what we're going to do next if it has an empty line at the end. Um, that should be fine. So I'm just going to exit that now. And we don't need the web browser anymore. So what we need to do now is open up a terminal and check to make sure that the BIOS files that we downloaded were not damaged in transit in any way. And that's the reason why we were collecting those SHA-1 hashes. So we need to just CD over to where our USB key is. So on this particular system, it's slash media uh, slash Linux leech. And it was Toshiba. There we go. Now to check that these BIOS files weren't damaged in transit, so they weren't damaged during download and copied to this USB key, what I'm going to have to do is create a hash of each of these files and then compare it against the hashes that were on Dell's website. Now in my particular case, I copied the SHA-1 hashes and I also copied each of the hashes with the file names to a file which is going to make my life really easy right now. So I can actually check every single one of the files that I downloaded all at once. Now as I used SHA-1 hashes, what I have to type in is SHA-1 um, sum and then dash C and the name of the file that I saved my hashes in. Now, just bear in mind that this needs to be in the same directory as the files that are going to be checked. So it was bioschecksums.txt, and if I hit enter, I'm getting a warning here at the end, which is one line is improperly formatted, and I bet that that is the blank line I left at the end. So I'm just going to edit that now. So uh, what was it? It was BIOS. Yep. Yeah. And... I'm just going to delete that last line and run it again. So sha1sum-c bios checksum.txt. And as you can see, for all of the files that we were checking, so that's A09, A10, all the way up to A14, we're getting OK on every single one of them. So that all worked out. Now, if you copied MD5 hashes, the process is exactly the same, except you need to use MD5 sum 
and the same goes for um, SHA-256. So it'll be SHA-256 sum and then dash C and the file name for where the hashes are. Okay, so now I've finished with everything that I need to do on this USB key. So all of the files are here that I need and they check out, they're all okay. So now I can move on to actually upgrading this laptop. Okay, so this is the screen of the Dell Latitude E4310 that I'm going to upgrade the BIOS on. What I'm gonna do here is just plug the USB key in and power the machine on. Okay, so as you can see on the boot post screen, in the top right hand corner, I need to keep mashing F12, the F12 button, to get the boot options. But I've already configured this laptop to boot into USB first anyway, so that's what it's gonna do. But if it wasn't configured like that in the BIOS, then I'd need to keep hitting F12, and I'd be able to select USB from a list. And as you can see, the BIOS revision is A10 already. So I'm gonna install A. 11 onto this machine. Okay, so this is the UNet booting screen. So we are booting off of the USB key at the moment. And there's one option which is default. So I just need to hit enter on that to access the USB key. Okay, so this is the FreeDOS boot menu. And the option that I wanna pick here is option five, which is gonna boot FreeDOS from the live CD only. So it's just gonna boot off of the USB key. We definitely don't want to pick option one, which will install it to the hard disk, and then we'll be stuck with DOS. So don't do that. Option five. Okay, so now we've booted FreeDOS, we need to navigate to the root of our USB drive. And what we need to type in is just C colon, because it's when it's DOS based, so the C drive is the root. So there you go, you can see that we are now in the root of our USB drive. Okay, so as you can see, these are the BIOS files that we installed earlier. And all we have to do to run them is type in their name .exe and hit enter. And for this particular BIOS update utility, we've got some instructions on the screen. And hit Y if you want to continue and N if you don't. Um, also make sure that you have your, if it's a laptop, make sure that your AC power adapter is plugged in. Otherwise, this will fail. It Most laptops won't let you install BIOS, even if you have a full battery. Um, you need to have the AC power cord plugged in. So there you go. So I'm just going to hit yes on this because I want to install it. And away it goes. And again, just hit yes. And it says that my system will restart automatically, so just let it do its thing. And there we go, that's all done. And we've got this green message at the bottom of the screen saying the BIOS update was successful and it's rebooting the system now. So we just wait for it to reboot and wait for it to post. And there you go, you can see that now the BIOS revision is A11. And what I'm gonna do is unplug the USB key and just make sure that the system boots correctly. Okay, so that's brought us to the end of this tutorial. I hope you found it useful and thanks for watching. Goodbye.